Okay. Well, here it is. Um, our studio is an integrated development environment. It's, uh, it's open source free. It's a tool to develop applications in R. So that's certainly one reason why we should use it. It, it also is a really good front end. It automates, it simplifies a lot of the tasks of using R, makes it easier for the user or the programmer and um, let me clear some of this out. So here's the console. Once you install R in R Studio, all you have to do is start up R Studio, and the console just starts right up along with it. So uh, you can clear the console. Control L clears the console, and here's a workspace up here. The session, previous session that was restored when I started it up, you can clear it in R Studio just by hitting Clear All. And that gets rid of that. And then down here, we have various uh, tabs to install packages. And there's a graphing plot. And there's a, uh, a drill down, uh, a uh, explorer type capability where you can drill down to files on your disk. So a lot of nice handy features here that are useful. Now, with R, as you can with, m with many platforms and programming languages, you can, um, you can interface with R. You can use R either in an interactive mode or a batch mode. Now, a couple of words about R. R is an interpreted language. It's not a compiled language. You don't have to compile your source code into binary code in order to execute your, your programs. It is, it is an object-oriented program, it, uh, an object-oriented language or environment. It's not a pure object-oriented environment like you would find with Java, but it has many of the same characteristics. It actually is more of a hybrid. To say it's just purely object-oriented uh, would misdirect, would mis mislead you because it really follows more of a functional programming paradigm. And you can embed other pieces of code, other bits of code in C and uh, Python and Perl. And uh, you can mix other parts, other c code pieces by uh, compiling them and then attaching them to the R code. So it's kind of a unique, uh, in a lot of ways it's unique, but if you do code in other languages, particularly Java, you will, you will see a lot of similarities in the functions, or C++. You'll see a lot of similarities in the characteristics and, and in the names of many of the functions themselves. The syntax is easier to learn if you know another language, or if you learn R first. Um, I took some Java classes after I learned R and I found the similarities to be striking. It was much easier to learn Java after I knew R, even though most professional programmers, you talk about R and they'll say, oh, that's a sissy platform. That's not a real coding language. Uh, and I'm not sure where they're coming from, but um, it, uh, it, there are a lot of similarities. Okay, so interactive or batch. Now, most people use it interactively and will use it interactively. Um, it, it's an interpreted language. It's a lot like Lisp where you have commands that are statements on a single line like this first one here. And what R tries to do, it's... Uh, it run, it ha, it's an interpreted language, but it looks at each line thinking, assuming that a line is a unique statement, and it tries to evaluate that line as an expression. R is an expression-driven language, a lot like Lisp. If you know Lisp, you'll see the similarities. Now, R, R has many functions. There are I don't know how many uh, thousands of native functions. You don't have to ever write a lick of code if you want to use R, but but you can. It is a it is a programming system development language in its own right. 
Now let's let's look at using it interactively and we'll look at the expression type syntax where expressions are nested. Expressions are embodied in encapsulated in these parentheses and you can you can nest as many expressions as you want inside of parentheses in one line. And we're, we're, if you're new to R, we're starting out here with one that really is relatively complex. Um, so here we have two functions. Anytime you see a, a word and then parentheses, it's a, it's a function. And here we're, this is the uh, R norm, the uh, this is a sampling, a simulation. It's a family of functions that you can use to create sets of numbers, sets of uh, uh, probability dense uh, probability samples. Uh, I'm sorry, you, uh, samples of uh, from different probability distribution functions. The R norm. What the R norm does? R norm is a function that will randomly generate a set of numbers that has characteristics that mimic a random normal distribution. And here, so let's, let's look at what it does exactly. Now, if you ever want to know what a function does, the quick way is just say question mark, name of the function, question mark r norm, that's help, question mark is help. And we do that, and we get the help screen that pops up over here, the normal distribution. Uh, w one nice feature about R, the documentation is really very good. It's very concise. They don't throw a lot of garbage at you that you don't need. The, the help pages for functions tend to be, tend to be brief. And this is no exception. So it shows us the different forms of this function, D norm, P norm, Q norm, and R norm, and we're just using R norm right now, it gives you a description. It says density, distribution function, quantile function, and random generation. That's the one we're using, random generation, for the normal distribution with mean equal to the mean and standard deviation equal to SD. So here's a the syntax here is the formal description of the function that we're calling up here it has three formal arguments n mean and sd standard deviation so you've probably figured out in our call to the function up here what we're going to achieve is we'll end up with a set of a thousand integers that are just it's a pseudo random number generator it's not really random we'll end up with a set of a thousand integers that have a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 3. So with R, because the statement is an expression, it just simply tries to evaluate the entire statement. But you can selectively highlight part of the statement, like this, just this part, and hit run and it will just evaluate that part. So let's see what this does. So we highlight just the R norm part and we get the return down here in the console. We can see that it has evidently output a set of a thousand integers. We see the tail end of it there. And uh, the, the real, they're not integers, I'm mistaken. They're real numbers, okay, real numbers. But if we took the mean, the mean should be about 10. And the standard deviation should be about 3. And if we did this over and over again, every time we do it, we're going to get a different set of numbers. Okay, so let's, um, so now we execute the entire line. I'm going to highlight the line so that my cursor stays on it. And so we highlight, we do the line, and sure enough, what we're getting is the mean of this set that gets generated over and over again. So the first time we see it's got a mean of 10.11, so we execute it again. The mean is 9.93, do it again, the mean is a little different. 
And you probably know why. Every time we execute this line, it's also executing this again and generating a different set of numbers. So it does it over and over again. What about the variance? OK, if we estimate the variance, it should be about 9 because the standard deviation is 3, and the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if we do this a couple of times, we see that it does indeed uh, come close to 9 every time, 9.15, 9.55, 9.95. But if you did it 1,000 times or 10,000 times, it'd be real close to 9. And then finally, standard deviation also should be very close to 3, and it, it, would, it is. OK, so um, note, note that we have functions within functions. OK, every time we do this, R is evaluating, trying to figure out the value of the statement and, and show you that. And you, you've already noticed, of course, that you see these little um, subscripts that are appearing with the output each time. Well, what is that? Well, excuse me. R, um, R, R puts the results in a vector. The default data structure is a vector. And a vector is a sequence of elements like a column, you could think of them as a column of data, a sequence of elements that must be all of the same type, homogeneous. So, and every time you print out the value of a variable, it's actually, the variable is actually being stored in a vector. And in the console, it will always print out the index or the subscript of the first element on that line. Just so you know, just to help you help orient you to what you're looking at. So even though when we executed these statements and we are returned these values for the expression, they were single elements. R still puts them in a vector, a vector of one. You you really have you don't have a scalar, you don't have any scalar variables in R, even though people will talk about that. Even if it's a single number, it still stores it in a vector, which is the default data structure. Okay, well, so interactive, you can run it interactively, and again with R Studio, shortcut is we can just put the cursor up here in a line and hit run. And every time we do that, it executes the line, and then it jumps down to the next line. So we don't have to constantly go back and forth. So that's kind of handy. OK, well, you can also run files in a, in a batch mode. You can take a sequence of commands and, and put them in a file with an R, a dot R suffix and put it on your computer somewhere and then just simply call call that file of commands whenever you need it using the source function source source is the function that will go out and find a file and pull it in and execute all of the lines of code now there's a couple of handy things you can do in R um, first of all it's, it's a good idea to know where your directory is because R is always looking in the directory, whatever the default directory is. So you, the command to, to see what the directory is, is is get wd with the parentheses. When you're calling a function, you need to use the parentheses even if you don't have an argument. So if I say get wd, so this is my default directory. 